this is the other side of the orchid hobby that is well in my case inevitable it happens unexplainable in some cases explainable in others this is my orchid SOS I see you and um, I won't see you again I see you I won't see you see what I did there <laughs> thank you so much for joining me everybody uh, I do have some work to do some decisions to make and I'm gonna take you along and let's have a look at my SOS candidates here I appreciate that you are here and I appreciate if you stay because it's not pretty this is not one of those pretty shiny sparkly videos but needs to be done so let's get to it remember the little Fios propagation experiment we had five and now we are down to one this one didn't make it and now I only have that one left and it's looking pretty good still it's actually leafing out a little bit Let me get my hand out of the way it's leafing out a little bit there it's got a little base going the actual cut of the spike doesn't look too bad that it's sitting on so um, well we're down to one because the other bulb is also gone I didn't film that it just completely deteriorated and collapsed in on itself so what am I thinking if I do this again and that includes the phalaenopsis spikes I won't go node per node I'm thinking of leaving then a longer spike maybe two nodes and let the bottom one be the one I want to develop or let the spike decide which one it wants to develop but leave more sustenance in the cut of the spike so a longer stem has more nutrition which I do believe then will allow for more success in growing so instead of five you only make maybe two and then let them develop as and where they please with more sustenance that is my conclusion regarding the spikes and why I've also always failed on the phalaenopsis spikes I've been chopping node for node not next time Remember my ring Costylus gigantea? I was going to transplant it at one point and realized suddenly on, in that video that everything had just deteriorated and there was nothing left. So it went into straightaway rescue mode, but we've got color back, so that's nice. We lost two leaves in the meantime, and the whole thing has come off the stem. Here's the stem nestled in damp very damp sphagnum moss but look at this it's just poof come off so that is the status of my rinko stylus gigantea and it won't be replaced uh, this would be my third one my first was a very weak plant so I bought a second one which was a super healthy plant I couldn't get it to do what it needed to do my third was a very healthy plant Plenty of leaves, plenty of material to work with, no dice, and all the other Rinko Stylus crosses that I have are one of the most hardest for me to get roots, to get them established, to get them thriving. So, a species Rinko Stylus, I will not be replacing it, and I don't think it's going to make it. It's green, I'm leaving it, we'll see what happens. I see you, or maybe not much longer my little Hawiara look at this after three years just doesn't want to do anything I have now managed to hold on to this growth right here that is form of scale damage so this growth hasn't deteriorated and now it's grown this one in the last couple of months with some roots but it's not vigorous at all however it's coming out of the sphagnum moss not today I'm just showing you and it's going on a michael mound because according to ninja orchids roots grade scale this is a one 
and it was perfect for a Michael mount. So that's going on a Michael mount. What about the Cochleola Volcanica? Yep, that is something we're going to take off right now. It has grown some roots. It has released the Lekabold. There are some roots down there, but it is not a happy plant. So apart from taking this bulb off, it is depleted. I don't think that it's got any rot in it whatsoever, but I'm not going to take that risk. Everything else stays as it is. One growth that to me in its current status is fully matured, no bulb to speak of, and it's trying another little one. But uh, Cochleoda Volcanica, my conclusions here, I got a dud. Just like with a Hawaiata, I got a dud. And uh, I'm doing my best to keep it somewhat green and alive and hopefully get it to recover. It is also going on a Michael Mount. But today we're just going to take off that bulb. Next up, freckles, little freckles. A gorgeous little fowl that my daughter bought me. Beautiful white blooms, little freckles, teeny tiny little freckles all around the lip area. And look at what I've done to it. That's what's left. I'm going to address the leaf, spray hydrogen peroxide, show you the one root I have. That's why the microfiber is draped over it. It is in a bed of lava rock that is just moist. And it's been like this for almost a year now. I had some scale attack it. That's been taken care of. But whoop, there you go. That leaf took care of itself. The smallest leaf here was a pathetic small attempt to get something going. Poor, poor little thing has got now another leaf growing and I love it for it. But I have to say, we're going to address this with hydrogen peroxide and see if we can't encourage it to continue doing what it's trying to do. Baby, baby, I need some roots here, man. I really, really do. So this is little freckles, the decline. That's me. I don't know what I'm doing. I will keep trying. Until we get to that, we'll just drape over the little root and put it back where it belongs. I'm also going to wash this little pot. There's some black mold on there. That's from the what used to be happy sap. It's trying to manifest itself there. So wash or exchange the pot. Probably exchange goes faster. This is me. I don't know what I'm doing with my complex fowls. And along the same theme, I've been watching Unicorn now for two weeks in its pot like that. The stem is firm and I said I was not going to do anything about it. And look, hang on a second, I've just seen. Look at what happens with weak plants. Here comes the scale. Okay. I was going to address this last, but now that I see the scale, straight away, I've got my alcohol here on the end of my paintbrush. And we're going to at least treat the ones we can see straight away. I'm not waiting for this. But this little orchid was perfect. She was absolutely perfect. Well established in the pot. And now, look at this. This is me. This is all me. And I stand before things like this and scratch my head and say no more fouls. If I can't take care of the ones I have in my collection, I am not repeating it. Just because they are readily available doesn't make them any candidates for me to put them into this situation. It doesn't. So one has to admit when it's just, I mean, I've grown orchids for years and I, 
I stand with a big question mark in my head when it comes to fowls. It's trying to grow another leaf down the middle, but we'll address that right afterwards because that's a lot more cutting tools than I'm happy to sterilize. And um, I'll just take care of the other ones first. Let's take care of little freckles. It's a good day to be doing this. It's one of those hazy hot summer days, not too sunny. And I'm just going to brush alcohol with the cotton pad underneath the leaves, what's left of them. And try to get some of the black off. I've washed and sterilized my, my pot and I've put fresh lecker in there as well. So I'm trying to avoid getting alcohol onto that root because alcohol is desiccating. So I don't want that to affect that little stumpy root that I have. The only, only little resource I have. These are old scale marks. Poor little thing. I look at Phalaenopsis with trepidation. Maybe I need to change my energy. I've tried to change my energy around Phalaenopsis. Plants can probably pick some of this stuff up. All right, just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide around the stem. Now the fact that it's trying to grow that little leaf, it gives me hope. But on the other hand, I remember from past experiences when it does that, that takes the orchid down fast because it's consuming energy with no substance, nothing to take it from. That brings the rest of the orchid, the rest of the leaves down super quickly. I'm just going to peel off this sheath what's left of it, if there's any, any help at all, I want it to make it as easy as possible. It's coming off quite easily, I didn't need to cut it, but I did split it. So there's something down there, hang on a second. Got to sterilize my hands here. I don't think this piece has any, any, anything left in it, but look, it has a little something coming right out of the corner here, right there. It would be a miracle, an absolute miracle if this amounts to anything. As long as it's green, I keep trying. Poor little thing, I'm so, so sorry. There you go. And today I don't have to rush it into its environment. It is a very hot, muggy day here, but there is no sunshine. Well, limited. And let's look at Volcanica. So why am I not just mounting it right now? Well, first of all, I have to sew some Michael mounts and then I don't want to wait long for this bulb. Who knows what kind of distractions I have between now and actually being able to do the mount. So I want to get rid of this bulb. Despite the fact I can actually do it when I'm mounting. But it's not coming off on its own. There we go. These little roots give me hope, marginal hope. But again, 
it's green. So I keep trying. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, it's completely hollow. It's not squishy or anything. It's completely hollow. I'm going to just sterilize my snippers because off camera because I have other orchids around. I don't want the alcohol to affect them as with the spray. Okay, let that evaporate. Put you away. My plan with unicorn was to leave it alone. Not do anything. As I mentioned, whenever I leave something, whenever I touch something like I did with little freckles, I intervened relatively quickly, it just took the orchid down. And I was going to wait with unicorn, but um, no, I can't, I, it's bothering me. I need, to, I need to know what I'm up against. And then um, what I'm going to do is cut off the top and leave the bottom I'm going to snip it off right here, but I'm going to leave the bottom and see what the bottom does, if anything. I still have two viable roots going in there. Let's have a look if I can show you. You see that? It's still trying, still got some green. So I'm just going to lop off the top. I want to go down as far as possible because if I have something in there that I don't like, I want to be able to snip up as far as possible. This is doing wonders for my hands, I'm telling you. <laughs> It's like it just went woody, nasty, just took it down. Is anything coming off at all? There's something here. Hope, would that be hope there? <laughs> hope, unicorn hope. I hope so, because it wasn't doing getting anything from below. Oh, I hope so. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide. And I'm gonna let that fizz away. Look at this. Oh, those are the ones we took off before. Look, they just went, they just deteriorated. Good. Get off my orchid. Let's get another disc. And then here. Now the thing is, Phalaenopsis having these big broad leaves, they open their stomata at night. So I'm not particularly concerned with wiping the underside. But you see, But you see, this is what I mean when I say I can't do fouls. And I always hate that as well because I do have some that are going well, but I can't tell you why. I cannot explain the difference between why I've got one or let's say five doing well, and but I've lost what? Let me think, I've lost about eight? That's not a good ratio. That's not something to write home about and say you know what you're doing. So I, I could actually add a little bit more lacquer. 
so that the stem rests on the humidity. But this is how she's going to be for now. And this little thing on the side, I don't know what you are. I'm glad you're there, but you know, there goes unicorn. There goes the unicorn. So that, that would be the current status of all my SOS orchids. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, am I, am I gutted, to say the least. We're going to do two micro mounts. Three, I have another candidate, but that's not an SOS candidate. But two of those will go on to Michael Mount, and the other ones will just cross our fingers. Like I said, I see you, and I hope I continue to see you, and you're not going to be gone. Like, now I see you. Now I don't. Anyway, yeah, thank you very, very much if you've made it this far. This is not a nice video, but it is a video about the reality of my collection, so mine is a journey. Thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. I really, really, whoops, before I say anything else. Whoa, let me check this one. What do you think you're doing? You have got to be kidding me. No way. I was just signing off, looking at them, and bam! No way is that, oh goodness, Nina. No way is that going to happen. But they do go for the weak plants, don't they? Nasty, nasty critters. I know they serve their purpose, but go serve your purpose elsewhere. All right, and with that said, and that done, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate having you here. Uh, keep your fingers crossed for us. Thank you. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.